Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna talk about my M18 Bravo edition. So we're gonna start covering a couple topics. Uh, we'll just run through it real quick. So this is the gun that I had on the holster video last week and I said we were gonna do a breakdown of it. So we'll talk about everything that I have ordered to piece this together and then we will talk about reliability and a safety tip. So stay tuned for that. New viewers, be sure to like and subscribe. The channel has been growing at a very good rate that I'm very happy with and it's encouraged me to make more videos. So to start out the video, as promised, um, one, we will show nothing in it, okay? So we are completely safe, we're rendered safe. Um, just for those, uh, you know, trigger discipline, all the gun Nazis. So put your guys' uh, mind at ease. We have done that already. So. This is a Wilson Combat P320 M18 grip module, and it really, really, um, for me, makes a gun. It has really tough texturing on the front and the back, and a smooth, um, but also grippy enough texture on the side. So your sides don't get tore up as you uh, conceal carry this, and um, <clears throat> but you have a good enough purchase on the front and the back. The only thing I wish they did is I don't like this finger groove. I wish it didn't exist. I wish. Um, it just had a, it just went all the way up and it was just flat. I prefer that. However, you know, the SIG people love it, I guess, or something. I don't, I don't really know. So um, enough about that. Um, we'll move on up. Next, I put the skeletonized trigger from my Spectre Comp in here. And that was a really, really good upgrade. So the skeletonized trigger has a different angle on it at which it pu pulls the trigger bar. Um, so it is a lot lighter than the M18 um, trigger shoe so it takes it from like a six and a half mine was actually pulling at seven pounds which sucked and this one pulls at about four and a half just up just about five pounds which i really like um all in all with that i put a apex trigger bar in here and that helps um, take a lot of the pre-travel out i did a custom trigger job and just to show you how nice it can end up i'll show you here right so we're clear So very short, and got a good reset. It's much shorter than my X5 Legion um, reset, which I really like. The X5 Legion is just takes you right, right, completely back to start. And this was much shorter, so I really like that. And the Apex trigger um, system has a over travel stop and um, also shortens up the pre-travel by, I believe it, they advertise it like 75% and it feels like it does too. So all in all, a really good purchase, it's like 80 bucks. It's well worth it in my opinion. I did my own trigger job. Um, and if you know Gunsmith at your local range, I would recommend if you can't do it yourself, just to have him do it because you can make it so that way the gun doesn't fire. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, TLR 7A on this guy and they're an amazing company so long story short I broke a screw on there called them up they sent it to me free of charge I was fully prepared to pay for it since I broke it out of my own error uh, over tightening it and they sent me a new one for free can't be more happy with that right so pretty nice um, gas pedal add that on all my guns so I put one in here um, nothing but a compliment but the usually on a striker fired like non 1911 the safeties really suck on guns and this one is actually really nice as you can see so it's got a full zev upper um so i piece this all together it's just all the zev components of the 3.9 inch barrel um which you can see there that matches the slide the slide the zev sights i did a sig oem um, competition kit because i believe sig parts are the most reliable so I went ahead and I ordered those, um, put them in here with them. And Zev does a really good job at making the original components work well with the gun. I have used them on many, many of my Glocks. And so I had some extra um, ease of mind knowing that that would work that way. Now, one thing that, and the specific reason I went for this slide was for the RMR cut. As you see, it is incredibly, incredibly deep. So because of that, you can get a really, really good sight picture. Even with these, these are not optic ready or suppressor height sights. And it works really well. So um, 
for the most part, that is pretty much um, everything that I've done. So really, I have just done, you know, ordered all the parts, assembled everything, um, and did the trigger job. That's really all I've done to this. And then because it's like an EDC gun for me, um, especially in the winter, I didn't want to do too much to make it, uh, you know, to render reliability. And so all these modifications I've had done to this gun um, for a long time now, and um, I've had zero malfunctions with it. So very, very nice um, build. Um, the regular M18, so the way this gun started out was an M18 Bravo edition. It's just an M18 um, that was black in color. So I changed out the recoil spring because the recoil spring in it was that singular um, recoil like coil. And I noticed about 1500 rounds in it, I had three stove pipes and I just did not like that. So I wanted my EDC gun to have zero malfunctions. We're just in a day and age where you can go out and get a Glock or get some other gun that has a good track record and it will have no issues out of the box. So I didn't want to have that. I changed it out and this is actually the gun that made me aware of that because when I bought this one, I noticed that this one on the coils were braided and the other one was singular. So it made me really look into that. And then after I changed it out, I noticed, hey, no more stove pipes. So I don't really um, know what the purpose of that is. Some people don't ever have issues with that. I could have just had a couple, um, you know, random, random, you know, uh, just quality control things. I only fire premium ammo. Like all I shoot is Federal or Blazer, um, just, you know, actual name brand stuff. I'm not shooting my own reloads or, bra or uh, uh, steel or anything like that. So yeah, I shouldn't really have any issues with the um, amp from the ammo department. But nevertheless, that was the issue. So I ended up, you know, changing out to all of this and it's been wonderful. The only thing that I've noticed is around 4,000 rounds, this front sight shifted about two or three millimeters to the right. So always keep your eye, inspect your guns, guys. Inspect your guns, keep an eye on them, make sure they work the way that you want them to work. And the only way to do that is by inspecting them. So safety tip there is, you know, always do a safety check. And um, so that was something that was new to me. I've never had that before. Um, and I typically only buy quality sites like Zev or Trigicon. And so that was something that, you know, this was the first gun that's ever happened on. So all in all, a fantastic gun. Um, I will update you guys more on if that problem gets worse, um, especially like as I near like 10,000 rounds or something, I will let you guys know how that goes. That is something that obviously you need to keep an eye on. And, um, you know, luckily I have the optic as another, um, you know, means for, for shooting. Um, however, you know, the iron sights are very important, at least to me, they are for a co-witness. So it's important that we have those lined up. Um, so stay tuned. That is pretty much it for today's video. Didn't want to make a, a super long video. Um, but stay tuned next week. I should have all my components back. So I should be able to make my MMP intro. I have the MMP competitor, um, two tone, uh, five inch so that will make its appearance to the channel and then along with that after we get through that the following week we will have a comparison between the x5 legion and the mmp competitor and we will do a shooting comparison so stay tuned for the uh next content thank you so much remember to like and subscribe and again thank you guys so much